Hey guys, Chelsea from Attention to Details, and welcome back to the channel. Today in the shop, we have a fun challenge ahead of us. This is for a 2006 Jeep Liberty, and we're going to be doing an interior-only detail. This is for a first-time customer, and it's actually for his teenage daughter. She's had this vehicle about two years, and he said he's not aware if she's actually cleaned it in the last two years. And it kind of shows. We've got some major issues that we have to address, from heavy staining and soiling on our carpet seats and mats, a buildup of dirt and dust on all of our plastic and hard surfaces. Because the sunroof is broken and clogged, we've got some heavy staining on our headliner as well that the customer wants us to take a look and see what we can do. Whenever I'm doing an initial assessment of a vehicle, oftentimes I can already see the potential that it can become, but especially with light colored interiors, they can sometimes be the most challenging for a detailer because they really show no mercy. If you don't have the right products and processes, you're not going to be able to remove 100% of the soiling or staining and they're just going to reoccur. So we really want to make sure we have the right products for the job. We're not going to be doing anything on this exterior. It's actually a vehicle that is stored outside. You can see that's why we have so much buildup of pine needles and just scum in our door jams. We are going to clean our door jams for this interior detail. I always do them for every detail, whether it's an inside or outside. but biggest issue that we have to address is the heavy staining on our carpets and seats and for those of you that maybe want to try to tackle a vehicle that is in similar condition i'm going to share with you guys my process so that maybe you can get similar results on your vehicles first and foremost we need to pull out all of our personal items belongings and trash have realistic expectations you see we have some bleaching we have some red dye Obviously bleaching we cannot undo and red dye based on how long it's been there or what they've previously used to clean it It may not be removable. We also have something really big and sticky stuck down the passenger seat track and a major tannin stain in this back seat whether it's coffee tea or soda we might have to deal with some wicking, especially on this light colored interior So I'll share with you guys how I would address each and every one of these scenarios First, we're going to start off with our rigid five horsepower wet dry vac. It's gonna give us really nice suction as we come in and try to vacuum all of our carpets and seats, as well as our plastics. You'll notice I'm using my work stuff detailing brush to actually brush all of our plastics and vacuum simultaneously. So that way, when it comes time to actually clean our plastics, all I have to do at that point is clean anything that's stuck on or that has stained our plastic. So it's just gonna make that step a lot easier and give you more efficiency. I'm also using various attachments. I have a long crevice attachment as well as a pet hair brush. That's gonna help me really stir the pile and get deep within all of the fibers of our carpets and seats. So that way when it comes time to my extraction step, I'm not having to remove as much loose soiling because I vacuumed it up with my vacuum step. As we move from front to back, let's now address the elephant in the room. And it's this giant pastry that fell down the passenger seat. This thing is smushed into every single nook and cranny of our seat track. A lot of professional detailers would tell you the only way to tackle this is to remove the seat. And yes, that is a way and it is probably the fastest way to be able to deep clean a space like this. But some people may not have the tools nor the capabilities of being able to remove seats. So let me share with you guys a way to treat a situation like this without having to remove the seats. I'm actually using a dental pick and I'm scraping off as much of the mass of this as possible from our carpets and our metal parts. You can come in even with your vacuum attachment and kind of try to agitate or scrape off the sticky mess. Anytime you're dealing with anything sticky, you want to try to scrape off as much of the object before you introduce any sort of moisture. So we've gotten everything sticky up that we could that was big. Now we're just going to come in and we're gonna vacuum up all of the little bits and pieces before we introduce any sort of moisture to this. Now, how we're gonna tackle this, and especially when you're working with alongside seats in tight spaces where you can't get an extractor, I'm gonna use something like Stoner Car Care. This is their upholstery and carpet cleaner. We're gonna just spray this liberally all over every surface. This is a lot safer than really coming in with an all-purpose cleaner or a really wet detergent. Being that this is dry foam, you can see we have some electronics there. We have to be mindful of how much moisture we introduce to this location. But when you have dry foam, that's going to allow you to get the surface stains really well. 
It's also going to help prevent any sort of wicking. You can see on our tight space beside our seat. I'm sorry, the angle is really hard for me to film, but I'm still able to get my hand and a microfiber in there and do a really good job of removing any of the surface stains. I don't need to have my extractor in this space to be able to still clean it. And then once I'm done using my microfiber, I'll come in with my vacuum, vacuum up the dry foam, and this area looks a thousand times better. Yes, I did one glove down, but you can actually see a huge improvement. We were able to get all of that nasty stickiness, and then we actually used Stoner Car Care, their upholstery and carpet cleaner. Now, I wanted something foam in this moment to clean this particular area. We've got some electronics right here. I don't want to saturate it with water. And also I want something that's going to be easily vacuumed up. I don't want to have to deal with a lot of wicking because there is a lot of heavy staining right back here. It feels like this is maybe some soda that's spilled. It's super sticky. It's like my glove just wants to stick to it. So we're definitely gonna have to use hot water to try to get up as much of this up. I know we're not gonna have perfection with these carpets and we are definitely gonna have a lot of wicking, especially in this area, because that looks like a heavy tannin stain, uh, which is more like your teas, coffees, etc. These seats back here, some of the stains do look oil-based, like over there. Um, so we'll see how much of that we can actually remove, but I'm not expecting perfection in this moment. I just want a huge improvement. On this headliner, we're actually gonna start at the top and work our way down because I don't wanna be sitting in wet seats when I do the headliner. We're gonna do our bonnet cleaning method. Now, I can already see up here, we do have a lot of dirt in our sunroof. The sunroof, it looks like it's not working. When I turned on the vehicle, tried to open it up to maybe vacuum out some of the seals, uh, it wasn't working. What can happen a lot of times is there's actually drains that run down the perimeter of your roof. And if they get clogged with a lot of debris, be it pine needles, dirt, and I can tell they parked this outside, there's a lot of pine needles in all the door jams, that will get clogged. And when you have water from rain, it's gonna have nowhere to go if those drains are clogged and it'll actually go into your headliner. And sometimes on some vehicles, there's actually those drains run down here. And what can happen is you'll end up with moisture underneath of your carpets. And oftentimes you're gonna have kind of a musty odor in your vehicle. Some people may not even know it because it's under the mats. They'll pull the mats up and there'll be mold and mildew. And then you actually have to have a mechanic get involved. They can blow some uh, compressed air into the drains, kind of blow it out, blast it out with high pressure water. But even if I were to wash this vehicle, chances are that we're going to have, uh, you know, creating more of that issue. So we'll do the best that we can to clean this with our bonnet method. Uh, but we're probably gonna end up having these stains reappear in the future if they don't resolve the issue with the sunroof. But that's an issue for another day. For now, we're gonna do our bonnet cleaning and then shampoo our seats, carpets, get our blower in here. It is a warmer day. We actually are around 60 degrees. It feels like spring and I'm loving it. I know it's gonna be short-lived because next week we are actually back into the 30s and 40s. So we're gonna get our blower in here, try to dry out as much of this as possible. So that way, if we have wicking, I can address that uh, before the customer picks it up. But before we do our headliner and seats, we're going to first address our mats. Because these mats have just so much staining in them, I would end up spending a lot of solution and a lot of time trying to get them out. So what we're gonna actually do, and this is probably the worst, the driver's side mat, you can just see it's so matted down and compacted with dirt and just stickiness that I definitely need to pressure wash this, but Another way, if you don't want to go that route, is you can kind of do a little bit of a pre-treatment. And what we're gonna actually do is take this mat and put it in our OxyClean and just kind of let it soak in there for several minutes, probably while we're doing the headliner, even while we do the seats and the carpets. And kind of just bend it in here. If you have a, a bigger container, you can do that. Most times, chemical is gonna be your best friend and the longer you let it sit, the more effective it can be. And this is just after a few seconds of letting those mats soak in there. You can see just how much dirt we're pulling up. So I have found if you have heavy staining on a headliner, a bonnet cleaning technique like this with a polisher and a microfiber pad is the most effective way to leave behind a clean and consistent appearance. Some people might use steam in this moment and some might actually just spray and blot with a microfiber. What that can do is just kind of push the dirt 
further out and make a bigger clean stain. When you bonnet clean, you're actually taking the dirt onto your pad and it leaves behind a consistent appearance. So we're gonna switch things up a little bit. Instead of using my Flex Ice Bio Break, we're gonna use Bonnet Pro Surround their Omega Citrus. This is typically a carpet solution that industrial carpet cleaners, uh, just professional carpet cleaners will use. Oftentimes they'll use this with a bonnet uh, method. It's really great at kind of encapsulating dirt. So that way it will actually crystallize over any sort of dirt should it not be pulled up with its bonnet cleaning and anything that's left behind each time you vacuum, the interior is just going to kind of help brighten um, the appearance and pull up even more dirt. So because I'm just trying to break down a lot more of the greasy nature of the stains and that I feel like that's what a lot of this is. It's kind of sticky this actually works really well for kind of breaking down uh, greasy stains. We're going to go with this route. I have my electric pump sprayer here from Car Supplies Warehouse. Just going to save me a little bit of extra hand fatigue. We've got this mixed up about a one to five dilution ratio, maybe a little bit stronger. And what we're going to do is just kind of go really heavy with our solution. I am going to be extracting with my Mighty Light 8070. It's a heated extractor, really nice lift to the suction. So we're going to be able to pull out a lot of this residue that gets left behind, but we're just going to let this kind of sit and work. The more dwell time you have, the more cleaning power you're going to get. So we're just going to kind of pre-treat everything. We're going to go really heavy on this fabric especially because sometimes it can just really hold on to dirt that's why i'm not a fan of cleaning these type of seats we're also going to pre-treat our carpeted areas it's almost like rice krispie treats snap crackle and pop you can just see we have a, a white head and just how much dirt it's picking up now, you really want to agitate until the point where you're actually going to kind of see clean fabric. If while you're agitating, you're still seeing streaks of dirt, come in with your solution again. Whenever you have solutions that really have more foaming capabilities, you want that cleaner to lift the dirt to the surface with the foam and then the extractor will pull it away. So if during you can actually see where I stopped with my agitation because right then and there, if we were to do bonnet cleaning with kind of a microfiber head, uh, it would actually pull the dirt onto the surface of the pad and it would do bonnet cleaning, but we've got a lot of heavier dirt, so we're gonna extract. Right there, you can just see a huge difference just in solution and agitation alone. Okay, we're done. It looks a lot better. I'm just kidding. And don't feel like you have to speed through this step. Let your agitation do a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So we're gonna keep letting that sit. After letting our solution sit and agitating our carpets, we're gonna come in and extract. Now I have three different extractors that I use here at my shop and I could have used any three of them, but there's certain benefits that you're gonna get with certain machines. I have a residential Bissell Spot Clean Pro that I like to use in situations where maybe I don't want to put down a lot of water. Maybe we do have a high risk of wicking or I need a shorter dry time, or maybe it's just a very light degree of soiling that I just need to kind of do a spot cleaning. That is a perfect unit for that. And you can put hot water in that and it will work pretty decently, but you're gonna spend more time chasing heavy dirt like this with a residential unit, but you can do a good job with a residential unit like that. Um, then I have kind of my middle tier Aqua Provac. It's a cold water extraction uh, extractor that I picked up several years back. Uh, and in some scenarios, I prefer to use that versus my Mighty Light just because it's more lightweight. Uh, it doesn't have as much overspray off of the shoe. You can see we've got some steam and some overspray coming off of the shoe of this extractor. That Sometimes I'm not a fan of that aspect from this machine, but I did specifically choose this extractor for this job because we have hot water extraction. It's going to heat it to over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. We have a better lift, a better, a better suction, and so I'm gonna really be able to pull as much of this cleaner 
dirt and water out of our seats so we're going to have a faster dry time. A lot of detailers will tell you to rinse until you have clear solution. Um, if I had tried to go for that goal, I would have been putting down a ridiculous amount of water and we would have had a really difficult time getting these seats to dry properly. And now I did spend about 20 minutes per seat extracting and we did have to respray with our cleaner, re-agitate and go over it just to try to pull up even more of the dirt that we were kind of pulling up and rinse it away. But this definitely wasn't an easy job. We had to do all the sides, the fronts, the backs, every square inch of these seats had soiling on them that we needed to remove. And because of the type of fabric that's on these inserts, it's giving it this weird lined appearance, but trust me, when everything was dry, it had a nice, clean, consistent appearance. But sometimes you have to know when to stop. And, and if you are going to just continue to go over your seats, if they have heavy soiling and you're just continuing to pull up more and more dirt just be aware you might have issues with wicking and you might have issues with kind of a musty smell in the interior if you're putting too much moisture down to extract so sometimes you kind of have to know when to call it quits you can mop up with a microfiber to get any sort of surface stains treat with spot stop afterwards um, but we did use a blower once everything was all done to help accelerate the dry time and we also turned on the heat on the interior uh, we closed all the doors just to try to help get everything dry faster. We do have cooler nights with it being winter. And so you really have to be careful, especially when you're doing heavy extracting in the wintertime or in cooler temperatures with making sure that you get things dry before nightfall. Because then I actually had this issue with this vehicle, even though we had accelerated drying time uh, with blowers and heat, there was just so much moisture and just kind of humidity on the interior of this vehicle that the next morning when it froze we had ice on the inside of our vehicle so i had to turn on the defrost let everything run for like 20 minutes and just kind of sit there with a microfiber uh, to make sure we didn't have water go down into any areas that we didn't but this is just one of three empties that i made with my extractor this day and it was just gross it smelled awful and it was really satisfying when everything was said and done but it took a lot of work and a lot of extracting to do this passenger seat was definitely the worst out of all of the seats that we worked on and as i am going heavy with my solution you can see the lower lumbar pillars they're just kind of bleeding brown we've reactivated whatever old spills had been there and we're definitely going to have to pay attention to those areas when we're extracting and afterwards as they dry to make sure we don't have any sort of wicking issues so i'm getting a lot of overspray on all of my plastics from our drill brush and just going heavy with our solution and in this moment, I'm not gonna really worry about cleaning up any of that overspray because we're gonna clean our plastics after this step. As we're extracting, we're gonna get even more overspray on plastics. So just save yourself a little bit of time, be a little bit more efficient. Don't necessarily kill yourself over getting all of the overspray on your plastics until everything is all said and done. If you find after doing your first round of extraction that your seats still have kind of a dirty appearance to them, that's where I'll come in with my solution, re-agitate, and then immediately extract. The first time, let it dwell. Let the solution work. But that second time, because you've already lifted a lot of the dirt to the surface, when you re-agitate, it's just going to do an even better job of kind of pulling that dirt to the surface to make your second round of extraction even more productive. So we actually refilled the Mighty Light 8070 two times before we were all done extracting this interior. That's eight gallons of water that we put down to be able to rinse away all of the dirt and staining that was on this interior. If you think about if you were to try to use the Bissell Spot Pro or something like an Aqua Provac even, how much downtime that would be required just to empty and refill your unit. So that's definitely one of the advantages of having a larger, more professional extractor for those that are going to do this on a more regular basis. Um, having a more professional unit is really going to give you better results, but also help you be more efficient with your time. And time is money. And so oftentimes it can be an investment purchasing a more expensive unit like this, but it really is going to pay off in the long run because you're going to be able to speed through your interiors and get better results. So now that we are all done with our seats and carpets, let's turn our focus to our mats. Look how 
nasty our water is after just letting these soak. For most vehicles that I see, the dirtiest part of the interior is actually the mats. And you can see we're spraying with our chemical, agitating and extracting, just like we're doing for all of our carpets and seats. Another great way to get deep clean results for your mats is to actually pressure wash them after you've agitated with your chemical. Be careful of how close you get your tip to the carpets. You can actually scorch the carpets and do permanent damage if you get too close. Uh, but even if you come in with a 25 or 40 degree tip, you can do a really nice job of blasting all of the heavy dirt that's in your carpets up and then come in with an extractor or even a wet dry vac and remove the water, let it air dry in the sun, and it will be a great way to deep clean your mats if you do not have a pro grade extractor to use. It looks like the vehicle had been smoked in, but it hadn't been, but that's just how dirty this water was. So normally I just pressure wash my door jams, but we don't have that set up for today. So we're just gonna use a standard hose with my mist setting, a detail brush and some all-purpose cleaner, sprayer cleaner, agitate and rinse away. Very quick and easy way and less messy to do your door jams. Now let's move on to our plastics. And we're gonna be using PNS Express Interior Cleaner as well as our work stuff detailing brush. This is one of the biggest problem areas for most vehicles. And most people struggle with really getting fine-tuned detailed results. Sometimes they'll just kind of bring in a microfiber or a towel, spray their cleaner and try to wipe up as best as you can. When you use a detailing brush, it's really gonna help you get into those nooks and crannies. But what good is it if you don't have a way to get any of that cleaning solution and dirt out of those really tight corners? Let me share with you guys a quick tip on how I very easily fine tune my plastics to be able to give me professional level results without really spending much time. So this is my mini car dryer from McKees 37. This is actually a variable speed unit. You can run this off of a normal amp outlet. You don't need anything specialized for it. And even if you have solution in these tighter areas, I'm actually gonna benefit from that solution, put some fresh product down, because if you have some of that solution still down, it's gonna be easier to blow out versus just dry, because as you're pushing that liquid out, it's gonna take the dirt with it. So don't feel like you gotta mop everything up before you do this step. Let the cleaner benefit you. You don't want it necessarily to the point where you're blowing a lot so you can mop up some of the excess but leave some of that solution down because when we come in with our variable speed dry and you have anywhere from low medium high we're gonna put our microfiber in front to kind of catch it so we're not blowing it all over our clean upholstery most professional detailers are using compressed air or forced air to be able to give them these kind of results i have found that this unit actually replaces the need for compressor and specialized tools and it still gives me the exact same results and i can actually use this on the outside it's an extremely useful tool that i have found has paid for itself time and time again and one last area that some people overlook we did lift this up here as much as possible to clean down in here because oftentimes it's just a cesspool of dirt and dust that gets collected. But we have our gear in park, but it could look fantastic as most vehicles are parked when we clean them. But when the customer goes to drive away, obviously they're going to be going in reverse and then drive. So you want to actually turn the vehicle on. You can see all that dirt and solution. So we're just gonna fine tune that. Turn the car off before we kill ourselves of carbon monoxide poisoning. And that is fine tuned. When the customer drives away, all they're gonna see is just a clean appearance left behind. So that's how I would address fine tuning, especially this area. This is sometimes the dirtiest of the vehicle because this is where everything lands. So we've got that clean. I always start in the front and then just work our way back. 
So now we are officially on the home stretch. I know once I get to my plastics and glass step, regardless of how big the vehicle is, how dirty our plastics are, I have about an hour of work left to do. We're still using the PNS Express interior. We're also going to use the Autofiber Scrub Ninja as well as a Magic Eraser. These are older plastics, pretty bad condition. They can tolerate a little bit more of an aggressive approach on certain areas. If you have like a soft touch finish like this does around the handle, you wanna avoid your magic eraser on areas like that. But when you've got a lot of built up dirt, especially in your textured surfaces, a magic eraser, just some quick swipes are going to be a really great way to deep clean quickly. But if you're a little nervous about removing any of the finish, use your autofiber scrub ninja. It's a great way to deep clean texture surfaces, but especially on step ups, magic eraser is my favorite tool to use on those areas. We're still using our blower to blow out all of the solution and dirt from our crevices, even if you have speakers, uh, touch buttons, etc. It's a great way to just blast out all of the dirt and very quickly get clean results. What good is it to clean the inside of your glass if the outside of your glass is still dirty? So even though we didn't wash the exterior of this vehicle, I'm still going to clean the exterior glass. So that way, as a professional, I can see if I've been able to really give my customer streak-free results. Using a magic eraser on glass, if it doesn't have aftermarket tint, is a great way to cut through some of the film that can build up on your glass. And then we're using our Stoner Car Care Invisible Glass to give us streak-free results. So you can just see how dirty <laughs> that outside glass was. It really needed a good cleaning. So once we have all of our plastics deep cleaned, blown dry, we're gonna come in and actually condition the plastics. Oftentimes, if you have faded plastics, it's because you haven't put any sort of UV protection down on them. I'm normally not a huge fan of dressings, but when I do use one, I use Shine Supply Clean and Shine. This is going to give us really nice UV protection as well as put back some moisturizers or conditioners back into our plastics so that way they don't have a faded appearance. So after several long hours of letting this interior dry out, here's the finished result for our Jeep interior. All of our plastics, glass, and door jams were cleaned. Our carpets, seats, and mats, we were able to realistically probably get 98 to 99% of the soiling and staining removed. We had explained to the customer that realistically, we may not be able to remove everything just to the severity of how bad they were. But when they came to pick up their vehicle, they were extremely happy with the end results. I could just see kind of a sense of comfort and relief from the driver that she was finally able to feel comfortable in her own vehicle. And at the end of the day, that's all that really matters that the customer falls back in love with their vehicle so check the video description box down below for the products we use and make sure you like and subscribe and stay tuned for future videos we have coming out but thanks for watching we'll see you in the next detail